hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using your homemade walking stick. This is just a dowel rod. You can pick it up at any do-it-yourself store or a Home Depot, low, something like that. It's made out of oak. This one is an inch and a quarter. I suggest going with an inch if you're a beginner and go a little bit thicker, makes it heavier and it's stronger when it's a little bit thicker. You have to sand these down. They come kiln dried, which means that there's no moisture in it. So you're gonna have to sand it down, get it really nice and smooth, and then get some oil on it. The more oil you get to soak in there, that means oil it every day for the first couple weeks. The more oil that gets in the wood, the more durable and strong it's going to be when you use it for self-defense. Now this is the perfect prepper self-defense tool because it's a good gray man option when you use it as a walking stick. In fact, you can use a traditional walking stick that you can get that is made out of something that's very strong and durable to walk around with. Use that as a walking stick and then train with this at home. Get really good at using this as a self-defense tool. Hello, Garen. And then you'll be able to use whatever walking stick you prefer to use when you go out of the house. Or just carry this with you. You can also use this. Hello, Doug. Doug, it's good to see you. Garen, welcome. Uh, David's here. Hello, David. Nice to see you. Now, I want to show you a drill. I want you to do this drill with me at the end of this training. But first, if you haven't seen this before, I want to show you how to simply use this walking stick, how to hit somebody with a walking stick for self-defense. So from here, you're standing with your walking stick. Your weight is on it a little bit. You're using the traditional way. As you're walking, the walking stick leads, and then you follow it with your steps. If you have to put it into self-defense immediately, you get into a better position where one foot is back, the other foot's forward. You put your other hand up, put the hand up. You're telling them to stop. You don't want to hit anybody. Quick legal disclaimer, I'm not a, um, a lawyer, but if you go looking for trouble, you're gonna get in trouble. If you're out to defend yourself, that's a whole different thing. 36 inches is the length of this stick. That was the question I just saw. So from this position, you're gonna slide your hand down the front of the stick and simply turn it. Turn it, this is the threat. We're gonna call this bag the threat. So if the threat is between me and here, I wanna get the, bag, the stick between me and the bag the threat, and then you can simply step in with a lunging motion with two hands on your stick. You're gonna be able to hit very fast, very hard. That's why this is a great prepper self-defense tool. You prepare for self-defense. Prepare so you don't have to panic. Prepare so you don't perish. Now, if you like self-defense or you like training with self-defense or training with me, please give me a thumbs up. So from here, your hand slides down the front, simply point your thumb at the threat, that gets it into the front hand, and that's your first stopping him in his tracks motion. You're gonna step in and push the arms. A simple thrust through the midsection, just like you're using a spear. So from here, you're minding your own business, but you're paying attention, you have a prepper mindset, you're prepared with all the different ways that a prepper prepares, and if you're smart, not only are you getting your food, your water, stocking up on supplies now so you're not paying five times as much three months from now, it's a real thing, right? If you're preparing in all these other areas, you should also prepare to be able to defend yourself and your family, your loved ones, in many different ways. And this is just one tool. This doesn't replace other tools that other, some people might choose to carry. This is another tool in your toolbox as a self-defense prepper. So from here, you slide down the front, point it at the threat, and you simply thrust. Now the second way you get this into immediate action is by sliding your hand down the back. Your hand comes from here to here, and now you have the ability to simply thrust with a punching motion, turning your shoulders and hips to generate maximum power, and when you step, you're gonna go through your target. You can also turn your hand over. Your thumb simply makes an upside down U shape, just like this, and that spins the backside of this walking stick up along the side of his cranium, right into his brain, turn his lights off, knock him out for self-defense. It's a very effective, yes, David says very effective. It's a very effective move. So the first way, down the front and thrust. The second way, down the back, thrust or uh, snap, turning your hand over. And when you practice this, you're gonna find that these are so basic, so simple, so easy for you to do at home when you're doing prep for self-defense, how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using your walking stick, or in this case, the homemade walking stick. Again, this is a 36 inch dowel. You can get it in many different woods. The harder, the better. If you can get hickory or oak, that's my first choice. This one is oak. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter. That used to be orange, I think. I think the inch is red, inch and a quarter is orange. 
but you'll figure it out when you go to the Home Depot or the hardware store or the do-it-yourself shop, whatever is near you. So, or, or you can look at the links below. I put some links below if you want to order it online. Your hand goes down the front, thrust. Your hand goes down the back, thrust or turn. Or you might be carrying it like this, not as a walking stick at, that you're using, but some people just like to carry a stick to protect themselves from vicious animals in the neighborhood. Some people walk out in the woods or in this area down here, there are a lot of bobcats. There are a lot of wild boar. People carry sticks. They carry other things too, but they carry a stick. So if they have to, they can strike and push and stop one of those vicious attacks. Or maybe it's another dog owner's a dog that's not well behaved and not well controlled. Um, Glenn says, thank you. Enjoy your collie videos. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks for being here. Doug says, rubber cane boots give better traction and stick retention. Doug's talking about getting a, one of the rubber cane boots and putting it on the end, and then that keeps it from getting beat up on the concrete or on the ground. And also, as Doug's saying, it helps for a better grip with your hand. You can hold on to it better. Now, there's one more way. From this position, you can turn your palm up. That gets you into a split grip. Now you can strike like you're chopping down a tree. It's very powerful and very effective or you can turn your palm over so that both hands are like this. You can thrust, kind of like you're using a bayonet attack. You can push in this way. You can strike with both sides. You can come down the top. You can lift them up under his body. All these simple and basic ways to defend yourself. Yeah, Garen says a lot of gators down here too. Absolutely. If, if there is a gator, you can run. You want to run, right? In a straight line, don't zigzag. I learned this recently. Don't run in a zigzag away from a gator. He's going to snatch you up. You got to run fast away. But if you have a stick, you can use the stick to defend yourself. As you probably know, most animals are faster than we are. Now, from here, we've talked about the four basic ways to get this into immediate action for self-defense. Sliding down the front, thrust. Sliding down the back, thrust. Or turn. Um, and, and then from all these positions, you can also go to the legs. You can use one hand, you can chop, you can do all these different positions. That's all correct. But I wanted to show you a drill today. We're going to start that in about 30 seconds. This new drill that I want you to practice, it's going to get you really good at handling your self-defense walking stick. When you are a self-defense prepper and you have self-defense or a prepper self-defense, and you're looking for how to hit somebody with a stick using your walking stick or homemade walking stick, you have to know how to do the basic stuff. And do the basic stuff really well. Don't worry about the complicated stuff. And having said that, I want to show you something that's not as basic, but it's going to become basic as you practice it over and over again. And it's going to give you a whole new level of skill using your self-defense walking stick. And this is true no matter which kind of martial arts stick you might like to use or what kind of self-defense tool you have in your toolkit based on a stick. How to hit somebody with a stick is one of my favorite subjects because there's sticks everywhere, all different lengths. And they have a lot of similar properties when you talk about using them for self-defense. And again, legal disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not telling you that this all holds up in a court of law, but use your common sense. You're trying to defend yourself. You have the right, human right, God-given right to defend yourself. That's what we're doing. We're just preparing so that we don't have to panic. We don't perish. Let the bad guy go home in the back of the stretcher or in the, uh, in the ambulance, go to the hospital. And then the cops come and take your version. And ev all the witnesses said, you know, the guy was really trying to defend himself. He had his hands up. He had to have, him to have his walking stick in his hand. And then the, the guy kept coming and he had to defend himself, right? However that works, but you get the point. Use your common sense, right? Common sense holds up no matter what. All right. <laughs> yeah, Garen says, even this, uh, Surprising how dangerous poultry can be. And Garen is, is, is I'm sure you're not joking, uh, the, the talons, right? The, especially on the, uh, a rooster, the ones that they use to fight each other with. They jump up and they slice each other up with those things. And they'll slice you up too. So you're right. Turkeys will slice you up. Uh, even a, a, a chicken, a rooster, will slice you up if you don't know how to handle it. All right. Anyway, use your stick for that. If you happen to be out walking in the woods and you get attacked by a, a rabid chicken, Smack him in the beak. Now, having said all that, I want to get to this drill because I've been excited about this drill. I've been thinking about doing this video all day, working with you today. Now, from here, your hands are in a split grip, and they're going to be splitting the stick about evenly. But don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I might, you know what, we're going to lower the camera a little bit. I can do that now that I have the new tripod. There we go. It's not scientific or super fancy Hollywood. 
but it goes up and down. From here, I'm gonna turn my hand over and I'm gonna replace one hand where the other hand was. So I'm sliding, pushing just a little bit on the bottom hand, and then the top hand is turning into the bottom hand. So I want you to practice this motion first. And I know some of you are really good at this already. Yeah, on a rooster or a gobbler, amen. You gotta watch those wild birds. I'm, 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 I've, heard, I've heard stories. But down here, the pigs will rip you apart. So you gotta watch the wild boars the worst. They'll gut a person. It can be fatal a lot of times. You're coming around from side to side. And this is gonna become a very important move for you. I'm gonna show you how in just a minute. But basically the idea is that your hand is never leaving the stick. In other words, you're not going like this. If you've ever done a martial arts a spinning tool or weapon or you know, like a bow staff or a bow or a joe or something like that, this would be the hanbo. You, you know this, you've done this, I've done this at the beginning. Your hand starts to just, there's a term I was about to use that's probably not appropriate. We'll keep it off of this video. All right, David, thank you for watching. Thanks for being here. David said thanks for your time and information. I really appreciate you being here. Now, what I want you to start to do is push it just a little faster and see this horizontal position. You're going for that horizontal position from one side to the other side. So your goal is to really get so good that you can control it and your hand can slide all over your walking stick for self-defense until you have good handling. And it's not gonna come the first time. So, if, but if you do it week after week after week, you'll be surprised even just a couple minutes a day at how fast you'll get good. You're gonna get really good at this very quickly if you do just a little bit every day. Now, that is so that you can strike from one side of your body and then switch so that your hands are on the other side in a powerful positive position or a positive striking position. So if I were to strike here with the left and then strike with my right, and I would wanna be able to do it very quickly. If I were to block and strike, block and strike, or block, swing it through and strike and swing it through and be able to take it back into the other hand. So swinging, and then my hands are back on it in a very strong, positive position. Thanks, Tony, for being here. Tony says, thanks for the training. Amen. Garen's got all of the, uh, the different variations of the animals that are gonna rip us up. All right, from side to side. Sadly, there was an army guy training recently, and he came across a mama bear with her cub. He didn't, didn't survive it, but it happens. That's why we have to respect mother nature. All right, yeah, Doug, Doug, make, Doug makes a really good point. He's getting the 7 eighths inch. If you get a hardwood like oak or especially the hickory in 7 eighths inch, it's a little bit smaller, but you don't give up a lot of strength. You don't give up a lot of striking power. Yeah, uh, Random American says, got a chair cap leg for the bamboo staff. All those are great options. In fact, if you would put some of those tips, you guys have already put a lot of good tips in the chat. Please put those in the comment section because when people come back, they don't always have the opportunity to see the chat, but the comments live on forever. So from here, I want you to practice in front of your body, starting to turn this into a striking motion. So you started here, just here, kind of in a neutral position, feet under your body, and then I want you to start to put, this is your right hand, put your right foot forward, switch, put your left foot forward, switch, right foot, switch, and slow as smooth, smooth as fast is very important. You don't need to rush this. Go as slowly as you need to, to keep positive control of your walking stick. Prepper self-defense is taking an opportunity when you have it, this is, this is something that I learned a lot in the military. It's a, a common, um, it was an order, it was a common suggestion, it was, it was a, a mantra, it was a truth that if you were like in a firefight or if you were on a mission, if you were in the middle of doing something, you want to be able to, you want to drink water when you can, not when you have to, right? You want to reload your ammo, you want to keep it topped off when you have an opportunity to, not when you have to. When you have to, sometimes it's too late. So self-defense, when it comes to prepping, if you're a true prepper, you're not just 
buying batteries and matches and candles and uh, topping off the fuel generator, you're training self-defense. And not just with this. People who think that they're going to be able to defend themselves like this, <laughs> and that's going to be enough. Unless, unless you've had a, an extensive amount of uh, military law enforcement training, and a lot of law enforcement will tell you that they don't get the kind of training that they want sometimes. But if you're not also training hand to hand for when this thing jams or when this thing can't come out fast enough or when you left it over there, or when you have to go into a non-permissive environment and you're somewhere like a bank or a school and you don't have this and, and all of a sudden the bad guys do because they don't read the sign that says they're not allowed to bring it in, right? Yeah. Oh, Malcolm, Mouse, Malcolm's asking what we strike. Malcolm, that's the best question and the easiest answer, easiest for me to answer. You have to ask yourself a question, what can you remove or destroy for self-defense? So, and this is a basic principle. This is a very important principle of self-defense. The basic, his ability to see you, his ability to be awake, his ability to think clearly, his ability to hear, his ability to breathe temporarily because you bust his nose and the blood and the guts are coming out of his nose, the, the mucus and he's crying through his eyes. And he can't, can't catch his breath or in the throat, right? That's permanent self-defense. This is all for self-defense. This is how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using your self-defense walking stick. Um, the sternum, right here, so he can't stand up and he can't catch his breath. Between the belly button and the private parts, right there in that thin fascia of muscle, you hit somebody there and it's gonna put them on the ground. So you have the face, right? You have the throat, you have the sternum, the solar plexus, you have the groin, you can come down to the leg, come around to the side of the head, into the neck, into the, the joints, break easier than the bone in the arm, all for self-defense. So those are, that's where you're gonna strike. Go for the center line first, especially with your thrusting. Somebody's coming at you, stick the stick right in his face. And someone said this, but if you put the stick out there, he's just gonna grab it. Not if you take that stick and you drive it through his face. <laughs> You're not, you're not standing here like, give me all your money, right? Just like with this, they don't pull it out and, and hold you up. They pull it out and they, they I saw a horrific video of uh, something happened in Atlanta last night. Some guy, I think it was a gang hit or whatever, guy comes up to him and there's no words exchanged. There's no, you know, making him be, pull out his wallet and give him his wallet. There's just immediate action and reaction. And so what I want you to do is adopt that same, you're not the criminal, you're not the thug, you're not the bad guy, but you're going to use those same principles of violence against violence, violence to stop violence for self-defense. So when you ask yourself, you know, if this guy, you know, he's a threat, you're not going to wait and put your stick and say, hey, buddy, back up. You're going to say, back up, back up, back up. Stop, right? And as you're coming forward, it's not about um, back up, back up. And then, yeah, he takes it away from you and smacks you with it. That's not what I want you to do. I want you to be the first mover. I want you to close with and destroy. I want violence of action for self-defense. All for self-defense. And I'm not saying that, that you go looking for a fight. If you can avoid it, avoid it. We say run, hide, fight. If you can hide and, and get cover and concealment, hide and get cover and concealment. But if he's right up on you and you don't have any choice, then don't hesitate. Don't stick it in his face. Stick it through his face for self-defense. That's what I'm trying to express. Um, yeah, Garen, go ahead. Garen, and put it, Garen, Garen has an idea, a book for vital spots for self-defense. There are a lot of good ones. Garen's got a good one. Put those in the comment sections below so that we can share those with people who watch this after the live stream, please. Now from here, I want you to bring it up over your head and come back down on the other side with a strike. So from here, come up over your head and bring it down to the other side with a strike. So the first level is this. You're gonna do this for at least maybe a minute, two minutes, every single day. If you do it for 10 weeks, if you do it for 10 days, you're gonna be really good. It's not gonna take 10 weeks to get good at this. Then the second one is in front of your body from side to side. And then you're gonna start stepping in with the same foot that's coming forward, the same hand. This is your right hand, your right foot is in the front. Let's see if we can see in the mirror here. So right, left, right, left. And the reason is, if you just strike here, you're strong. If you step and strike, you're substantially stronger. And when you are learning prepper self-defense using the 
perfect gray man option, the homemade walking stick for self-defense, and learning how to hit somebody with a stick with your, for self-defense with your walking stick, you want it to be effective. And if you can stop them with one shot, that's great, right? But you're gonna remember this maxim or this principle of self-defense. The fight's not over until you win for self-defense. So you're coming forward. This, we should call it the self-defense fight. Whatever we wanna call it. The self-defense episode. Where you were minding your own business, you were just trying to get home safely. The whole world's getting a little crazy. I don't know if you've seen this, but in Sri Lanka, they ran out of fuel this week. All the farmers were told to go organic months ago. All the crops have died because it didn't work out. I'm not laughing at them. It's just a, such a stupid idea that they keep doing these things. It seems to be universal. All these countries kind of falling apart. It's kind of scary. You know, the first thing you do, you get a lot of people who are starving and now they're burning down the houses of the rich and they're chasing the uh, politicians through the streets. Yeah, Musashi technique. Exactly. Yeah, the great Musashi movies. There's been several made. And then, if you're like me, when, when I was a kid, one of the first big books that I read was Musashi's Seven Rings. And then someone gave me the book of Musashi. But you're coming around. One, two, one, two. Over the head is the third level. Then, I want you to take the fourth level. I'm going to move this back a little bit so I don't hit the wall again. The dojong here, the dojo is a little... Hello, Chris from Scotland. From Glasgow, it's good to see you. I remember being in Scotland, how cold it was. Beautiful, though. Um, EMF is one of the main problems. Plants, yes. Uh, do you pull back the other hand like a katana strike? Absolutely. And just like the katana, it's the backhand that is moving the weapon, right? And if you, you, if you work with the sword, you know that it's the backhand pulls. Last three fingers, first two fingers are kind of relaxed. Front hand, wrists turned out, same thing. So yes, Doug, it's like the katana or uh, the gum, gumdo, the gum, is what the, the Koreans have their version of all that stuff too. Um, the book is Black Medicine. Black Medicine, you're welcome, Doug. Thank you. So from here, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to pull and strike. So we're going to turn this into a fun little move because I want you to get your footwork and I want you to get you moving off the center line because you're not going to get hit when you can learn how to, you're not going to get hit as much. I'm never going to tell you you're not going to get hit. <laughs> if you're defending yourself, you're going to get hit. You're probably going to get hit. But I want you to be... Um, Oh, okay, thanks, Karen. Yeah, maybe you have to come back after and put them in the comment section after the video's uh, over, after the live stream's over. So from here, you're thrusting, pull back, thrust, and then lift. So I want you to get into this. It's kind of a rocking motion. Forward, so you can see me in the mirror behind. One, two, one, two. And you're just going straight forward. We're going straight forward now but then eventually I'm gonna have you stepping off the center line. So you're gonna go in with the thrust, into his throat, into his eyes, and then over to the side, and this is, inter it's an intercepting block. You're turning, you're bringing this up, this hand is coming up here, this hand is coming up here. You're just, just think of bringing your chicken wing up, bringing your elbow up by your ear. So from here and in here, and then change your hands, do your strike. Pull back, thrust, lift, change your hands and strike. One, two, change your hands and strike. One, two, change and strike. But wait, there's more, because I have, I know some of you already know how to do this one. I want to add to this, and I want to make it a little bit more powerful and a little bit different and harder for you to learn so that you grow. And, and some of you probably already know how to do this. But you're going to push, block, and then come through with one hand. So it's a, and it's going to be a hard take their head off for self-defense swing. Or take their knee out for self-defense swing. Or they're reaching out with that knife trying to stab and smash through their elbow and shatter everything for self-defense swing. So you're going to pull, thrust, block, switch feet, and just let it rip. And when you do that, you've got to go through a full range of motion. When it comes back 
here to the back hand. Your back hand is going to be palm up and down, but there's the switch. Uh, I just lost it. There's the switch. So from here, one, no, I'm wrong, wrong side. One, two, three. Back of the hand. Switch. Now you're in the other hand position. Let me see if I can drop the camera a little bit more so we can see more of that one. Robert says, good approach. Thank you, Robert. From here, this is your left foot. Block or strike, push, block. As you're switching feet, swing this all the way through. See how long this is? And this, I, I don't ever want you to come from the side when you strike. This is coming off of your shoulder. See how that brings it through my center line? That just dissects me, cuts me in half at an angle, right? This is gonna miss. This is gonna get stopped. He's gonna close that distance and your arm is gonna wrap around him. You're never gonna hit him with your stick. This, you can adjust. You can pull this hand down here and you can slice him through that way. And he's always gonna be behind your stick or in front of your stick. Always fight from behind your stick. So from here, one, two, as you're sweeping through, it comes that back side. I want you to see that I'm turning my thumb up. The other hand takes it. There's the hand transfer that we practiced. Now I'm in the other position. Then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna push, lift, swing it through. See how it comes down. The other hand is gonna come palm up and switch hand position. Now you're in your original hand position. So this is, this is the drill. This is what I want you to work on. One, two, swing, switch hands. One, two, swing, switch hands. And eventually, you're gonna be spinning this thing. And I'm trying to slow myself down because I don't know how close I am to the mirror in the back. I can feel it, and I don't wanna crack them because they're such nice mirrors that came with the room. And I don't wanna have to replace them. Those are like 1,200 bucks. So from here, one, two, swing, and I'm here in this position. Then, that's not enough still. I still want you to level yourself up. Even though this is self-defense prepping, or prepping self-defense, self-defense for preppers, I forget what we called it. It's just because I watched too many prepping videos today and uh, seeing all these crazy things that are happening. And I've been, I've been a prepper since, before I was called prepping. And, and not like the weird kind of prepping that people used to make fun of, but just always trying to be ahead and think about like what's going to, oh, coffee is going to go up. I'm going to get extra coffee before that goes up because I don't want to pay the extra price. I know I'm going to use it. And the funny thing was I went to the, uh, I put them in the freezer to keep them fresh. So I went out in the freezer this morning and I have two left from what I bought something like nine months ago. And nine months ago, coffee was 70% less than it is today. Isn't that crazy? The, the coffee that I drink, 70% left. I looked at all of our costs, they're up 40%. We finally got really good at bringing our costs down as a family. And then inflation pushed everything up. We looked across the board, the average is about 40%. And I'm not complaining because I know we're all feeling it at the same time. I'm just saying, wow, if you're not paying attention, you better start paying attention. This is how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using your walking stick so that you have a gray man option in case somebody comes for what you've got, right? From here, one, now I want you to step off the angle. So if you think about a slice of pizza, I haven't had pizza in a while. I've been trying to watch my, I wanna live longer because my kids are younger and I wanna see them graduate. So I haven't been eating as much garbage food that I normally love. But a slice of pizza is a wedge, right? It's just that wedge or this angle. What, if you think of taking that nice, juicy, delicious slice of pepperoni pizza and you cut it in the middle so that you have like two pieces, right? Two wedges. You're gonna go to one side, you're gonna to go to the other side with this drill. One side and the other side. We'll call this the pepperoni pizza drill. From here, one, two, bring it through, make the hand transfer, step back to your center line. One, go the other way, switch hands. Oh, wait a minute, we're swinging, and then step back into the center. In fact, you could probably practice both drills, one, two, one, two, and get comfortable getting off the center line, do it with the easier one first, and then bring it through on the second one, switch.
swing it through. One, two, whip. Bring it through. One, two, whip it through. One, two, bam. Rip that thing through. You start to build some power in those strikes. So if you ever have to, you can use this for self-defense. Not that I want you to. I don't ever want you to have to hurt somebody if you don't have to. Self-defense is purely self-defense. It's, pure, it's, it's, it's this idea of your human right, your God-given right to protect yourself and your family, knowing that the first responders aren't always going to be there, so you have to be your own first responder. That's all this is. Let the police officers handle it. But what happens if they get there too late, right? We see that all the time, and it's not their fault. They've been under attack by the forces of evil for so long that between defunding and all the other political nonsense, they're all hamstrung. And so you have to learn how to take a little bit of action to protect yourself and your family. You guys have been awesome. That's what I want you to practice. Go back and watch it again. Let me try it one more time in super slow-mo just so you can see my hands. and then reset. That's a thrust, you're, you're hitting them with this, trying to make them stop. You're stepping to get maximum power. My hands, your hands are gonna turn like this on that thrust. Thrust, lift, swing. The right hand or the back hand comes up, change hand positions. And then you're able to go this call coming in you guys have been awesome and uh please come back help me out if you haven't given me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed uh, subscribe and then come back and put comments in the comment section that really helps this channel grow i know we're all feeling it <laughs> let the advertisers pay for it right hopefully more people watch it and the advertisers pay a little bit and then my 40 percent costs will get taken care of because this place uh I'm not getting a re rent reduction, right? Everybody's got to eat. Everybody's got to pay their bills. And, and in that way, we're all in it together. Not the big wigs, not the fat cats, not the corrupt politicians who are playing the game against, I don't know, who knows what. But we're all together. So this is the, the people's dojo. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.